little smoky river Fallen timber, a strong standing tree. How's it going, everybody? It's Dusty Tucker um, coming to you with a video. Uh, something pretty simple. It's just going to be how to uh, prep 12 gauge shotgun hauls like this plastic spent shotgun hauls. Um, for roll crimping using the an old-fashioned roll crimper which I'll show you, I'll show you here in a minute um, basically how to prep a case like this so I can utilize it in the roll crimp properly because of uh, the plastic tapering on the fold crimp from the previous uh, load that was in here there's a couple of methods that you can uh, you can do to you can use my old I have a tool here that I made a while ago. You can use this and put some heat on it to kind of reform the plastic. But I find the full length shell too much and the roll crimp, if you try to roll that much material, it's just going to make a, it's going to squish it down into a really thick, hard uh, block. And it's going to be a lot harder to feed into your shotgun than it would be if you cut this down about three quarters, if you cut the old crimp down to where the fold is you can see the, the kind of the, the little fold marks that are in there about three quarters of the way down on, off the old crimp and uh, if you cut that and then uh, use that straight edge like kind of like this that will roll crimp a lot easier and a lot smoother than it would if you tried to use the tapered part like this it kind of creases it and it makes it uh, not so even or whatever so I'm basically just going to show you a quick little video on how I prep spent hauls to load for roll crimp so you can either roll crimp them with uh, smokeless or black powder I'm using black powder for cowboy loads so just uh, you've seen how I load those in other videos so I won't go too much into it at the end of this video but um, some of the tools that you'll need if you're going to go this way this method um, I have a vintage 12 gauge uh, shotgun priming tool. This is meant for brass hauls, but it will work for the plastic ones as well. It will fit the plastic ones in there. You could use them for those too as well. The only problem with that is if you have a really picky shotgun, if your primers are too low inside here, it will... Uh, not strike it your firing pin will not strike that so this tool can be a little bit tedious to use if you're gonna prime with it there's a I I just use my uh, my Lee uh, 12 gauge press there load all I think it's called um, I just use that for priming I did use this in the past but it caused issues like I said uh, I went to a match after loading with these guys and I seated the primers too deep inside the pockets here and the firing pin was not reaching them so it uh, caused me a little bit of time delay on the on the range so but that is one option this actually works better with the solid brass hull the the magtech brass hulls these guys here in case you don't know what they look like I'll just pull one out real quick these are already all loaded uh, it works a lot better with these. These are supposed to be large pistol primers or large rifle primers. You can use to uh, push that in a lot better. And it works way better for the solid brass hulls. I don't shoot these too much because I only have I only have the one box of 25, and I kind of want them to uh, to last as long as possible. But if you're in a pinch, you could load with these. This tool, I think. This vintage tool only cost me $5 at a gun show that I went to. Um, if you don't know what they look like, you can just screenshot this or whatever. So the next time you go. But uh, make sure you bring an empty hull with you because this one, uh, I did find a mark on it once upon a time. But if the seller is not very sure, uh, what I did was I brought an empty 12 gauge hull with me to the gun show so that I could make sure that it fit in that recess perfectly then you know you have the right tool so you don't get a 20 gauge or a 
410, but that's obviously too small. But anyways, so I'm just going to go through and show you um, how I cut that. I kind of made a little tool. Um, I have a bunch of little wooden tools here. I got a, a depriming tool that I made just out of a dowel and I put a hard uh, washer on the back there to absorb some of the hammer impact. But I just use a wooden hammer for it anyways, so it's not like I'm hitting it too hard. So I'm gonna kind of see if I can flip the camera angle and show you kind of a kind of a first person view of what uh, how the operation goes. I'll flip that around. Okay, so I got the camera back as far as I possibly can. It's actually at the edge of my table, so I'm gonna have to flip camera angles again, cutting this to kind of show you what I'm doing. So I got the camera right in front of me. My voice is kind of shot still. I'm uh, I'm still sick. I was supposed to go to a shoot this weekend. I really wanted to go, but I can't. I didn't want to get people sick, so I just stayed home. Um, so these are some of the homemade tools that I did. I, I made. It's just a wooden hammer. Just used two pieces of dowel. Made a hammer. Big whoop. Nothing special. This guy was a little more complex. I took an old iron square nail and hammered it in this way first dead center and and then I kind of glued I stretched it out first actually and then I hammered it in and then I cut the the end off and then I took it on the uh, on the anvil and just kind of rounded it to a to a point big enough that it would push the the shotgun primers out and then I just put a t-bar on it with a washer and a screw holding it in there just to kind of help absorb some absorb some of the impact and so like this is a, a spent one this is a fresh one I haven't done anything to it yet so what you can do is you can just grab a wrench and you want to use the recess in here just place this on there grab this and it always centers itself out pretty perfectly so you just push the dowel in there until you feel it stop a little bit grab your hammer of course <laughs> some of them are a little more stubborn than others there we go so it's gone took it out now you don't have to do it this way you could use your shotgun press this, these are kind of primitive tools and I just like doing this once in a while these shotgun hulls were fired out of my side-by-side -side, so you technically don't need to resize them at all because they're they're morphed to that chamber of your shotgun so you could technically you don't even have to run them through the resizer you could just put a new primer in there and then cut this and load it or whatever but yeah so this guy that I made it is my uh, kind of my powder tamper um, wad tamper it just it pushes everything down with ease I had a uh, basically polished the surface of this wood you can see how it's a little bit shiny on that side and it's it's a tiny bit thinner along the corner I sanded the edges just a little bit and if you have a fresh dowel like this it's obviously not going to be as smooth like this one here this one's a little bit newer and it's it's really stiff and it it doesn't want to go in very good and it, it sometimes it gets stuck but if you kind of like take it and sand the edges and kind of uh, um, I just took like a a piece of um, a wool and just like not steel wool just regular wool and just buff the crap out of it and until I got it nice and like kind of polished and now it just like slips in and out like nothing it's super easy so there's a little recess that I have cut into the dowel here and that's my cutting guide so you'll see it go inside and there it's going to be right where that fold is and I kind of know that so that when I'm cutting with just an exacto knife like this I'm going to cut right I'm going to aim right for that fold and I, don't, I can't do it right now because the the handle the t-bar on here is going to go tung 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 and make a really uneven rough cut this camera is right where I want to do that so I'm going to have to swap angles again Okay, so this might be reversed because I'm using the screen side of my camera so I can actually see what I'm doing. So basically, I find that little groove, push it in. 
you can see how it went into the groove. I know it's in there. And now I just take it and spin it. It'll just follow that groove. Boom. And now you're gonna have a relatively even cut. You're gonna have a more even cut if you tried to free aim it. And just to check it, let me pull this old plastic ring off. You can check it and you can see how it kind of overlapped a little bit right there. So you can take your knife and just uh, try to cut that off as well if you really want to be specific with your cuts. I try to be as specific as I can. And if it just won't go, if it just keeps pushing the hull or whatever, don't worry too much. It's not that big of a deal. There we go. I got some of it. I want to make a new tool at some point that somehow will have a blade embedded into the wood so that I can just keep taking the dowel and spinning it and it'll cut as I go until it's where it needs to be. And that, that would be the best bet, but I just haven't designed it yet. I haven't gotten around to it. Maybe if I start making um, copious amounts of uh, black powder shotgun shells, I'm going to want to do something like that along the line. But for now, that works really good. And I have a little bit of uneven uh, pathing on that. You can see you don't really want that when you go into a roll crimp because it's going to fold these ends harder than it's going to fold that recess. So I'm going to try to like just get it as flat as I can just using my knife, just kind of eyeballing it. Another thing you could do is grab a, a Dremel with a sanding bit and just kind of go go around the edges. But that's pretty that's pretty decent. That'll work. That'll work all right. That'll be fine. Sometimes it cuts a lot smoother, and this is a a solid cut. And I just used my multi tool saw to make that recess. I just took one of my pre cut ones, stuck this in there, and followed the line to make that the line wherever you wanted it to. So that's that's the cutting method. So now you pretty much have a um, a case that's ready to go for the roll crimp. Okay, so just for the sake of the video, and in case you guys are curious, I'm just going to go ahead and load up a couple um, with the roll crimp. I think I do have a video on it, but maybe I'll add some things that I didn't know or didn't try before, and we're going to go. We're gonna go through it this time. So all the stuff you have in front of me is basically what I'm using, except for the, the knife in the back and a couple odd odds and ends. So I got some fresh primers here. So we're gonna try and use this priming tool because that's the first step. What we're gonna to have to do is grab a haul. We need a primer. So we're gonna take one of these old school 209 Federal primers and we're gonna stick them in just a little bit of the ways like that. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. Sometimes the inner primer will push in farther than you want it to. So it can be helpful if you use a piece of flat metal to kind of help push it in. This is, uh, I didn't come fully prepared for this video. So uh, I'm just going to try the, pri <laughs> the priming arm on my, on my uh, bench there. Just push it in there. So there we go. If I just push this in by itself, you can see how it pretty much just just puts contact on the middle part of the primer. I don't want that because I don't want the primer primer being pushed inside too far. So if I use just a piece of flat metal or <laughs> whatever you got lying around like this, it'll work. So there we go. And I can feel that. So that's that's going to work. So we're good. We're good there. <laughs> so then we got our primed. So now we need some powder. So I'm going to be using Schutzen. Um, Schutzen, oh, this is triple F. Maybe I won't use Schutzen. I don't really want to use triple F. I think I'm going to stick with double F. I got some GoX. Um, what I was going to show you, though, before I get started, this is the little spout that I made. This is the GoX um this, this is the GoX lid with just a soldered piece of brass to make a spout instead of buying them because, you know, it's it's me. It's my channel. I'm all about saving money. I came in uh, with some shoots and powder. Came into contact with shoots and powder. So I'm pumped to get some of their stuff. This lid 
is interchangeable on those containers. How freaking awesome is that? Look at that. That is pretty sweet. So you can actually use these lids on the same. Kind of cool. I uh, Just in case you didn't know that, that's just a little, we'll call it a, just a little black powder life hack, I guess. Something like that. So we're not using shoots in. <laughs> we're just using double F Go X. That shoots in was triple F. Okay, a weird lid that I made, don't ask. So we're gonna be shooting, we've got here 65 grains. I know it's a little overkill. You could probably get away with 60, but I just feel like doing 65. So we're gonna go 65 grains. If it bubbles up on top, no worries. I just flick it down a little bit. If you have a little extra, whatever. Nice and clean pocket. Something I forgot to mention before, um, the deep priming tool that I made does not wreck the pocket. I have checked. The whole entire stem goes inside. So when I'm pushing from the other way, it's not wrecking nothing before any of you guys comment on that. <laughs> I made sure of that when I made that tool. So there we go. There's the 65 plus grains of powder in there. So now we take my tamping tool, this sucker, we just push down on there. Listen to that crunch. We want a little bit of crunch. That's good. I just do that just for some extra and nothing really sticks to the dowel. In case you're worried about that. So now we need other components, which I obviously did not have ready, <laughs> but I'll get to it. We have um, some fiber wads. We're going to need those. And I've gotten grief on this before, <laughs> but I'll use nitro cards this time. Uh, that's actually a felt wad. I don't know what that's doing in there. Uh, these, uh, Nitro cards, these thick cardboard nitro cards. I'll use them for the sake of the video, but if you have just playing cards, ah, come on, three quarter playing cards uh, that I just punch out, those will work just fine. Don't worry about it if you don't have, you could utilize many different things. You don't have to. Some people are just stuck in their ways, and that's the way they've been doing it for a long time, and they swear by it, but they're um, they're obviously not very open-minded for new ideas and different techniques and stuff. They're just kind of stubborn old guys, we'll call them. Um, there's many of different ways. You can use cards. You can use nitro cards. You can even use just straight-up fiber wads right over the powder. It'll work. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I haven't had an issue in a pinch if you don't have this stuff there's always an alternative okay especially in these times these this is the perfect example these times of short supplies and can't find anything you could even use if you don't have a nitro card or nothing you can use um cream or i say cream of wheat um is that what it's called shredded wheat you could throw shredded wheat on top of the powder and just pack it down like crazy and then put your wad on or whatever it'll work it'll work there's nothing wrong with that you don't have to have a nitro card for hunting and best accuracy maybe maybe go ahead and use a nitro card but for cowboy action anything works you could use wasps nest for crying out loud like i got some of that right here i could use this and shove it in there. It's going to work. That's what they used for muzzle loading percussion shotguns. Why wouldn't that work in a hull? There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You can use whatever you want. Just pack the powder down. As long as you have compression, that's the main thing, right? You don't want any air air gaps in there. Okay, so now I'm going to try and do this. This is going to be kind of awkward. So what I like to do is stick the nitro wad or whatever you're using on top of your dowel and then kind of stick, oh boy. <laughs> well, okay, so we're gonna put it on the end there. I have the camera in front of my arm, so this is kind of difficult. Get it started anyway. 
There we go. Push it down inside. Now, if you really want to, you can take your hammer. I just have a... It's completely safe, people. This is a 14-ounce piece of leather. Nothing is going to happen. You don't have to use your hammer. I just did it because it's really hard to push in like this when my arms are so far apart because I got the camera right in front of me. It is fine. Like I said, this is really thick leather on my bench. Um, and for anyone that's going to give me grief about primers on bench too, well, same thing. Okay, so there we go. We're good to go. We got our 65 grains of powder in there. Now we need a, a wad. So we got a nitro card in there. Now we need a wad. Send a wad down inside. Same method. Take your, your rammer punch or whatever you want to use. Stick it in there. Give it a little bit of a twist to get it started. Oh, if it flakes apart, no big deal. It's just a filler anyway. Get it down inside there. There we go. Okay. So that'll absorb some of the recoil. Those fiber wads are awesome at resorbing, absorbing recoil. In case you don't know, if you have a heavy load, let's say you have a three inch chamber and you want to use the full length of the hull, you can get away with using two of these bad boys and it'll really help absorb some of that recoil. You won't even know it's a 12 gauge, it'll feel like a 20 gauge or a 16 gauge. So there we go. Now we're basically ready for shot. Now I like to do a little extra and... Like I said in, in other videos, I like to take a piece of playing card. I used a three quarter inch punch with a playing card. Now the reason I like to use a playing card on top of the wad is because sometimes the shot will get absorbed into the wad and will just, you'll lose me, I don't know, probably not very much shot, but you'll lose a little bit of that shot because it's gonna get stuck inside the wad. So I just like to put a playing card on top there see the playing card now the shots not gonna get embedded into there and you're not gonna lose some of your shot it's gonna actually help out okay so we have our I wish I had a um, an antique piece for measuring shot but I'd all I have is this plastic one that's all I could find so we're just using seven and a half shot and we're using just straight up one ounce one ounce of shot, so we're just going to measure out one ounce of shot plus some, whatever. I always do plus. And then we're going to shoot that into here. And you see that space that's on top there? That's pretty much what you want for the roll crimp. You don't want any more than that because it'll cause, uh, if you have, if you don't have enough a material on top you're not going to get enough of a roll crimp to keep the shot from rolling out and if you have too much like I said it's going to bunch it all up and you're going to have a really hard sharp edge and it's going to be hard to load into your shotgun so you kind of want to justify what you have it takes a little bit of getting used to before you like before I made this notch on here knowing where to cut the shells took a little bit of uh, figuring out. So now I'm going to use this because I want to be able to write on it and kind of see it. So I'm just going to put playing card on top and I'm going to want to kind of roll it and push it down and get it as firmly in there as possible. Oh, see, sometimes that does happen, but that's why we had extra <laughs> three individual shot. Didn't go in there properly, but that's fine. There, I'm gonna push this down as flat as we can make it. So that even that is quite a bit for the roll crimp. I could have gotten away with a little more shot, but that's fine. Um, okay, so now we have to go over here. We're gonna try this with the camera. Hopefully the camera doesn't fall off on me here. So this is the old roll crimp tool that I was talking about. I, I was uh, really bored last summer and I went on eBay and I found this sucker for only 20 bucks and usually eBay for Canadians sucks because shipping is just ridiculous. Sometimes shipping costs more than the actual thing that you want to buy is. So I just have this mounted to the side of my bench. It just has a screw pinch on this side so it's mounted in there. So I'm basically what I'm going to do is take this guy and plump it in here 
and make sure that it goes around the circumference of this little brass thing. Make sure it fits in there good. And you take the swing arm, and the swing arm is going to push in. You don't want to push too hard, but you want to push this in while you turn it slowly. Like that. And you can feel it. There we go. If you push too hard, this little circle, um, there's a little uh, middle piece in here, the, I don't know, this, the crank mount piece or whatever. If you push too, too hard, you're actually going to cut a circular hole in here, causing uh, a weak point in your uh, overshot card or whatever you want to call it. So sometimes I double up on the overshot card. But there we go. Like, look at that baby. Now you want to it's barely loose. Like it's, it's like a factory roll crimp load. Works really awesome. So let me pan back over here real quick. Before you put that in a box or before you put it anywhere, I highly suggest making sure that you know this is a black powder. So I'm going to go seven and a half. black you don't have to do it that way but I like to just so I know and then I like to go on the back side here and put a big fat black line so I know it's a black powder I'll look at it oh yeah black okay black you know it's black there's no mistaking that for a smokeless shell hopefully so that's another thing I totally suggest that you guys do so that's how I load my black powder shotgun shells for cowboy action. And what I like about the roll crimp versus the squished crimp, I find the roll crimp actually ejects a lot smoother than the squished crimp does. The squished crimp, uh, let's see. The squished crimp, sometimes the corners of these stick inside your chamber and they'll actually cause a little bit of friction, more friction than you really want. Um, and they won't come out very nicely, but roll crimp, especially if you've got lots of fouling in your chamber, that's just extra grab and extra drag. It's going to cause you a slowdown or not a smooth ejection. This guy, roll crimp, it actually, um, how do I explain this? It doesn't stick out past where the hull would be like this. Like you can see how this tip right here sticks out past the circumference of this hull which is going to cause drag. That doesn't happen with the roll crimp. The roll crimp will bevel out a little bit, but it's going to be beveling inwards, if anything, not out. So you're actually going to get a way smoother ejection with these bad boys than you will with these. So that's kind of why I like roll crimped shells for black powder. Um, I should do maybe one more in case you guys are curious if you missed something or whatever i'm just gonna do one more for you guys so let's grab another one of these bad boys so grab a primer and instead of so much explaining i'm just gonna kind of do it just kind of i just like to get it started that way you know it's not gonna fall on you or nothing and where's my little priming tool this guy it's something that you can just kind of take your time doing and for those guys that aren't in a hurry to do everything, you can just kind of sit here and sometimes, or you could actually load these at camp if you want, because you don't need a press. You don't need any kind of powder or any kind of electronic device to load these things. I'm just going to use this again because it's the only, it's the only piece of, uh, oh boy, come on. This is really hard to do, like I said, with the camera right in front of me here. So I'm just going to hold this in place. This is really awkward. Push it down, straight in there, like that, nice and flush, good, okay, so now we need powder, we're going to go 65 grains, where's my powder measure, what did I do with my powder measure, uh, is it in front of the camera, oh, it's over here, okay, 65 grains of powder, 65 plus, just a little extra there, no big deal. Pour that down. Give it some flicks so you can 
I always like to check to make sure that it's all gone. You never know. Now, I could just put the wad in and squish it down, but I like to do this separate crunch. Powder's in there. I'm going to grab another nitro card. Stick it on the end here. Crunch. All right. So we're good there. Now we need a fiber cushion wad. These ones do have a little bit of a harder surface, but I still don't trust it. I think I'd still rather use a card on top of it. Get it in there. Good. Now I'm going to use a Where's my homemade overshot cards? Did I put them away? Everything's just out of camera view. Well, let's use two this time just because. Well, I'm going to need two, so. There. I'll put two on the end and one over the wad. That guy. And we need our. One ounce shot, one ounce plus, on top, I like to kind of get it flat before I put my card on top, in this case cards, oh look at that, that one's perfectly white, nice, we'll use that one on top. these guys in there kind of push it down and twist it to make sure it fills every little gap possible now we come over to the roll crimp old school roll crimp zoom in just a little bit Ugh. all right push and twist Boom, there we go. Perfect. And then, of course, got it right on it. Seven and a half black. There we go. So that's how I load my black powder shotgun shells for cowboy action i i love and it just looks vintage too hey like roll crimped shells like that look pretty dope love it so that's pretty much all i got for you guys for this video i hope you uh i hope you liked or maybe used something that you could uh that you could use or found something that you could use to make a uh, cool little roll crimp shotgun shells like this and uh, the one thing I like about these is they'll, they'll never really unroll and you won't get shot to pour out. So these, these suckers are going to hold in there for eternity. They're not coming out. Nice, even. That's what I was talking about. Both of them that I did there. Nice, even, flush roll crimp. They're going to feed into your double barrel beautifully. They're going to shoot nice and they're going to eject flawlessly. So, uh... You don't need to have a fancy press to load stuff like this. You can use, just make your own tools, take time doing it. Of course, I can load them a lot faster when I'm not <laughs> nestling a camera in front of me. I could probably load 25 in half hour or so, maybe less, depending on if I'm, you know, if I'm watching something in the background or whatever, or if I'm listening to music and having a drink and visiting friends or whatever, just kind of pick away at it. It's something that I like to do in the winter. I'll sit there and I'll make a couple hundred over the winter and I'll use them for uh, for Frontiersmen or whatever category that you want to use black powder in or just even you can load up hunting loads like this too or whatever. It's just kind of cool using tools that don't require power or uh, any kind of uh, 
modern technology. It's just kind of cool to visit how they would have loaded stuff back in the day. Maybe not with a plastic scoop, but maybe one day I'll find a metal one. But just it's just fun to do stuff like this once in a while. Anyways, keep shooting black powder, guys. Have a good weekend. We'll see you next time. Dust Tucker signing out.